Ridiculous-looking thing, and get back to the bank. Huh? What have you got, Ebenezer? X-ray vision? Don't need X-ray vision to see through you, Sam Catherwood. Well, I, I'm just trying to prove that uh, bankers have hearts too, you know. Save it for your board meeting. Uh, why do you always seem to hate Christmas? I don't hate Christmas, Catherwood. I love Christmas. People become over optimistic, then they overspend, then they overborrow. That's great for my business. Hmm? Uh, spoken like a true loan shark. Well, we all can't be bleeding hearts, Catherwood. Would be rather messy, don't you think? I feel sorry for you, Eponita. You're missing so much. What? The joy of giving. Oh, Catherwood, I give every single day. Taxes. Mm. Merry Christmas to you, too, Ebenita. I'm sorry. I, I'm not allowed to make a decision like this. It, it... What is this, a yard sale? <laughs> she wants to borrow money on it, Miss Scrooge. Rudy's pawn shop, one block down next. I've already been there. He won't give me nothing on it. Please, I need to raise $100 for the bail bondsman. It's my boy, Arthur. He's been arrested. If you only knew the story... I know the story. Good kid. Hanging out with the wrong crowd, turning over a new leaf. If he could only get off this one time. You know how many times I've heard this story? The kid's a loser. Point it out for the lamp. Oh, Miss Mamie Ellis, I worked for her. She left it to me in her will. It's antique. It's worth a lot more than $40. Next. Cratchit. Wait. All right. I'll take it. Karacha! He had a dentist He missed his bus. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late, Miss Scroot. I hear your bus had a dental appointment. Huh? That... Oh, save it, Karacha! No, I understand. If I could just Marley and Scrooge, can I help you? Yes, we're open all day long, and we're just closed tomorrow, Christmas Day. That's right. Yep. You're welcome. Yes, thanks. Thanks. Uh, hi, Marley and Scrooge. Oh, are you still holding? Uh, hello? I think she was 18 years old. That's fine. You are not going to set on Christmas Eve. You are not throwing us out of our house. You are not throwing us out of our home on Christmas Eve. Please, Mr. Baldwin. Or don't. She's just an employee. We will not leave our home. Please try to calm down, Mr. Baldwin. Be quiet or... You know as well as I do that that was never your home, Mr. Baldwin. You. You. I believe landlord is the word you're searching for. I need a week to repaint for the next... Tenants. Miss Scrooge, I know we've been behind in the rent this month, but Ward has got bronchitis. If you would just let us stay till the first of the year, we would pay by the day. You mean rent by the day? Well, $100 a day. How does that suit you? Miss Scrooge, that's almost $1,000. Rental by the day is always expensive. It's a business principle. Who are you to talk about principles? <laughs> Ward, there's no use talking to her. Some women just don't have a feeling heart. You will roast one day, Ebenezer Scrooge. Well, if I do, Mr. Baldwin, you can be sure I will own the property. My office cracked it. <sighs> Miss Scrooge, I I'm sorry about that, but it's just that. Well, I guess I can sort of identify with the Baldwins. I mean, I've been in a tight spot myself. Huh. I know. I'm the one that pulled you out of it. You seem to have forgotten where you were that night not so long ago. I was a little down on my luck. You were a drunk, Cratchit. Huh? 
With a hungry family, no job, no collateral. What do you think I gave you a job, huh? And that much needed loan. Well, it must have been the kindness of your heart that made you do it, Miss Scrooge. That's right, Cratchit. Suck up to the boss. I know the loan is still unpaid, but we've made all the interest payments. And I've had almost six years of sobriety. I'm not pressuring you for payment of the loan, Cratchit. Just want you to get your fiscal picture in needed perspective. I'll uh, try to do better. There was one other thing, Miss Scrooge. I hate to bring this up, but we are starting a new year. No increase in salaries. But what about a group health plan? With the main office and the two new branches, there are 16 of us working for you now, and... Crush it! Health plans make me sick. You know what doctors cost. You got to learn to chew without moving your mouth in this place. Was she always like this? From day one. I once tried to ask her something when she was in that little room that isn't there. The little room that isn't there. There's a vault behind the tapestry. We're not supposed to know it's there. You can say that again. I knocked on that big old door, and when she saw me looking at all her money and stuff, she nearly took my head off. Marley built that, I think. Miss Scrooge learned everything she knows from Marley. Just fell into her footsteps. How long has Marley been dead? Ten years ago today. She was just sitting at her desk, and her heart just stopped. I was here. Miss Scrooge had her buried Christmas morning so she wouldn't waste a working day. That was kind of bouncy. <laughs> oh, well, most folks sing Christmas music like funeral music. I like a little bounce. That's why we bounced in on you, Edna. <laughs> Happy holidays. Oh. Happy holidays, Miss Annie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look at that little darling. First touch of green I've seen in this office. Yeah, I think it needs some calcium. Looks like it needs a decent burial to me. Merry Christmas, Aunt Bonita. Garbage. Back to work. <sighs> Merry Christmas. Seems to me you were here doing your Christmas number not too long ago, huh? That was a whole year ago. Has it been that long? Christmas is a time for sharing yourself with other people, with family. And we'd love to have you come over for Christmas dinner. Money knows no day on which it is not welcome. African proverb. This isn't about money. Everything's about money, dear nephew. Well, that's because you translate everything into dollars and cents. That is because I am a prudent person. Huh? Is it prudence or greed? It hurts me to say that, but... Well, don't hurt yourself on my account, nephew. Aunt Ebenita, you and I are the only family left. All the rest are gone. My mother, your mother, your father. My prayers are with you. Anna Benita. 
Don't let the donut hurt you, hmm? You know where they go. What is it? Uh, well, it's Christmas Eve, Miss Scrooge. It, it, it's customary at this time of the year for some token of... Annual extortion. Here. Thank you. And to make up for that totally lost day after Christmas, I want Edna and Annie in one hour earlier, you to stay one hour later. All week. Uh. Miss Scrooge, to ask us to work extra for no... Hey, during a holiday... Annie and Anna, one hour earlier. I stay an hour later. Have a minute. A savings bond. It'll be worth $50 in 10 years. Oh, don't let it spoil your holiday, Annie. Edna, have a Merry Christmas. See you Wednesday. Oh, uh, I, I have to tell you that... Yeah, we know. One hour earlier, we need the job, too. to do this? No, ma'am. Well, I suppose you'll expect me to feel guilty about not paying you for something I didn't ask you to do in the first place. Merry Christmas. Garbage.
smite me for the perks. I hear you. I hear you. It was another day of seesaw in the stock market. It opened with a sudden climb of 57 points, but reversed itself by noon and plunged 86 points. <coughs> However, by closing time, the market was within two points of where it started. Two points! Oh, no, no. As for gold... Hastily, I might add. Afraid I might come back to life? Reclaim my possessions? Now I can't. No! That line is dead, darling. Save us both time, Ebonita. I'm dead. I'm here. And I'm talking to you. Now I'll cut to the chase. I actually need your help. To rest in peace. See, that's all anybody ever talks about in the afterlife. How they do things differently, the grass is forever greener. But when I was alive, I lived by one question only. What's in it for me? I'll admit I was a little self-centered then. Cared not a whit for the little people. That's why every year on the anniversary of my death, I have to roam the world and see the happiness I can never share. Unless... Yes? Unless you listen to me and turn your little life around. What's so little about my life? Business has never been better. I own three buildings and a house with ten rooms. <laughs> And how many rooms in your heart? And how long will your chain of grief be when you join our miserable band? I, I don't have to do anything. No, you don't. Not if you change. My fellow ghosts will show you how. More oh, ghosts? Yes. You're tightly organized on the other side. Actually, you'd probably love it for a while. Tight schedules, time clocks, the works. However, the only problem is, it never ends. It goes around and around and around. Anyway, expect your first visitor when the clock strikes midnight, your second visitor at one, and your third on the stroke of two. Regular as clockwork. What is the point of all of this? Change, Evanita. For your sake, as well as mine. Either get me out of this, or join the crowd. For Those? You can have this place. I'm gonna be someplace else. Good thing we have our own vault, Mortimer. Me and you, Mortimer. They can have that house. It's too old anyway.
sitting alone for 6 a.m. and I'm not getting up a minute before. Christmas past. A ghost. I know what was the best Christmas of your childhood. And I know what you found in a certain cardboard box. Some little mutt. It was not a mutt. Hi. Thank you, Daddy. Mom. Oh, Harry. It's so sweet. <laughs> I never realized that the house was so small. What? You want it to be a mansion? I didn't want it to be anything what it was. This is the best Christmas ever, Daddy. Best one for me, too. Why are you so happy? I'm the one that got the puppy. And I got the girl who got the <laughs> puppy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's all kinds of pleasure in this world, Nita. But the best kind of all is this, giving something special to the ones you love. It's hard for me to do while I was away in the army. Were you lonely without us, Daddy? More than you'll ever know, girl. More than you'll know. But where are you going to get the money to start a grocery store, for Lord's sake? It'll be a partnership. I've been talking this up to my buddies in the Army for a year. We can each get a GI loan and share the work. But we may have to borrow just a little more capital, but we can do that. Your father never had a business before, did he? <laughs> Of course not. But she loved him too much to object. And you? My friend at school says that her daddy says that you're asking for trouble. Is that right? Mm-hmm. What does he mean? Well, some people may think that colored folks shouldn't open stores. Well, there's always going to be people like that. Seems that just being alive is asking for trouble. I remember how it all started to go wrong. One of his friends backed out to go up north, and the other one started a laundromat. So what if the others backed out? I'll find some other partners. I mean, this is still a good idea. I just got to hold on to that building. I paid the rent in advance. Hey. Hey, Benita, you still got that piggy bank your grandma gave you? You didn't lose it, did you? She hid it from me. You and your nosy friends. Well, you can hide it anywhere you want to, as long as you keep track of it, huh? Yeah, well, the only one in this family any good at saving money. Hey, you can tell 
me? How much you got? 79 cents. 79? Mostly pinks. Hey, how about a loan, huh? <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> so that's how you learned about loans. That's how I learned that hopes and dreams are nothing without money. Here you go. You kids know how much we're saving by doing this ourselves? Ten dollars? Uh, sixteen dollars. A dollar a day. Four dollars times four people. <laughs> saving a lot more than that, I can tell you. Yeah, you kids keep helping out like this. I'll make sure you both get some pennies for your piggy bank, huh? Hey, Perry, don't forget that trim there. I don't need to see any more of this. You need to see more of yourself, more of how you care. Here, Uncle Remus paused, opened wide his mouth, and closed it again in a way that told the whole story. Did you like that one? Yeah. Yeah. How much does Daddy really need to start his grocery store? More than we have, that's for sure. Well, what if he doesn't get it all? Now, let's just cover up and get some sleep. But what if he doesn't get it? He will, don't worry. Wish I had more than 79 cents. We wish we all did, Nita. We wish we all did. Please. Please stop this. I can't. Did he ever want to go in there again? To save your future. Let us handle it. Stay back. Where's George? Where is he? Did he go in there? That's what happened. Did he go in there? Do we have any more butter? I'll try to get some tomorrow. Look here. The folks down the road gave us a few eggs. Isn't that nice? When Daddy died, not only did he leave us without money, but he left us owing more money than we could find, except from selling the house that Grandma left us when she died. Now it's gone. It's gone. Dear Brother Perry, I just wanted you to see this last letter I got from Mama. Came the day after she died. I kept it in my hands all through the funeral. So you went north? Had to. After what happened to Daddy, I was determined to make it on my own. To never rely on anyone else. 
I was also wishing you could have come back. But I know the army has lots of rules. <laughs> Daddy sure taught us that. He would have been proud of you, I'm sure. Even though you said you never heard of Saigon before you went. Well, I didn't know much about Providence, Rhode Island before either. But here I am. The only providence I ever heard much about was in church. And that had to do with providing the good things in life. Hope that's what this town's gonna do for me. But first, I have to find a job. Victorian of my high school class. Mm. And then I went on to commercial college for two years, majoring mm. in accounting and bookkeeping. Mm. I've always been good at math. Molly was a master, though. Hard first rules, never smile at an applicant, or try to make things easier for them. The more desperate they are, the cheaper they'll work. <laughs> I'm also very good at managing money. I never lose anything, and I'm a great saver. <laughs> My brother Perry used to call me Stingy Benji when we loan him more money. Stingy Benji? <laughs> How much do you want? Stingy. Little did I know I had used the magic word. <laughs> you mean to work here? Hmm. Huh. Well, I... I don't know. You mean you don't have a goal? Oh, yes. I have lots of goals. Lots of ambition. I just don't know what the prevailing Minimum rate. wage, apprentice bookkeeper. That's my offer. Minimum? Hmm. But I've invested in a lot of training. Then you know the importance of market conditions. Labor is a buyer's market right now. Too many people looking for work drive wages down. Nature has laws built in. So does business. Well, I'd like to think about it overnight and maybe call you tomorrow. Tomorrow, someone else will be sitting in that chair. Take it or leave it. Today. Never bargained for less than the maximum. When do you start in the morning? Early. Edna will tell you what to do. was the start of it all. It was also the start of something else. Mm. <laughs> That's so funny. You uh, just walked under a ladder. Huh? Oh. So? That's supposed to mean bad luck. You look much too bright to be superstitious. That's good. Good enough to buy you a coffee? Yeah, I guess. By the way, my name is Steve. Except for my tennis racket. No, I can't believe this. Just bought it last week so I could 
Learn to play this stupid game with you. I thought you were Miss Organization. Oh, that's only with money and papers. I lose everything else. Mm. Mm. <laughs> well, you're not gonna lose me anytime soon. Oh? So just relax. <sighs> if we can't play tennis, we could always get our exercise some other way. Wise guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. No, no, my total is $1,634.78. Well, you better go check your calculations. Why you? Because I don't make mistakes. Not with numbers, at least. Well, that's our final offer. Take it or leave it. Benita. I like to give my employees a little feedback now and then. A little critique. You don't mind that, do you? Oh, no. I'm always eager to know how I can do better. Good. I would suggest a few things. A, don't dress excessively feminine. Buy more business-like clothes. Wear what? I could barely eat with those wages. B, don't treat the customers as friends. It just muddies the waters. Just look at her, counting all that money right in front of me. She knew exactly what she was doing. And C, learn to value yourself more. Demand respect from other people, and you will get it. And D, now don't faint. I'm about to promote you. I seldom promote people quickly because most people learn slowly or not at all, but you're different. You produce. Oh, thank you, Miss Marley. As of today, it's Maud. Now, do you prefer Benita or your full name? Either one's fine. Well, I think you should go by Evanita here. It's more dignified. Nothing cute about it. Whatever you think is more suitable. Well, you see, I have to think of our image here. And if someone asks for the head bookkeeper, you don't want them to get a name <gasps> that sounds cute. Head bookkeeper? On a trial basis, of course. And your salary will not go up the first month. Until I have had time to see how well you handle all this added responsibility, I'm opening a branch office, which should increase business significantly, as well as the workload. Here is a complete job description. Memorize that. That's all for today. Um... This position of head bookkeeper, what does it pay? It's a 30% raise from where you are now. And uh, what's the next position up after that? Ebenita, what are you trying to do? Climb the whole corporate ladder in one day? Just learning to value myself more. Maud? Looks like your boss over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nah, her teeth aren't that long and pointed. Mm -hmm. Actually, she's not that bad. Not that bad. Mm -hmm. She makes Ivan the terrible look not that bad. <laughs> she's been working you to the bone since that promotion. I know, I know. But she pays on time and the checks never bounce. <laughs> okay. So I have some poor clients, and I work for some non-profit group. Listen, you are going to be non-profit if you don't watch out. That's one of the things I want to talk to you about. What? You're going to bankruptcy? Benita, I'm going back to the South. Things are starting to change there, and they need lawyers like me. It'll be difficult for a while, but it's also going to be very exciting. I want you to come with me. <laughs> I want us to get married. I don't have an actual job yet, but I have a lot of contacts. <laughs> I haven't even picked out a city yet. We could do that together. You could probably find a job anywhere with your skills. I mean, maybe not as much money in the beginning, but... But, but what? What? Why should I go back to being a beginner again? Well... I guess I thought you would... for us. For the possibility of starting a life together. <laughs> us? That's a complicated little word. See, you're trying to fit two different people's ideas and needs and goals and patience into two little letters. That's not easy. 
How about love? Doesn't that make everything possible? I wish I could believe it does. My mom and my daddy, they loved each other. And that got them through a lot. But without the money my daddy needed, things just fell apart. My mama lived with a broken heart for the rest of her life. It won't be like that for us. Why don't you a lawyer or a fortune teller? I'm the man who loves you. And I'm asking you to take a chance with me. Why am I the one who has to take the chance? Hm? To go backwards. So being with me is going backwards? See, that's not what I meant and you know it. You just twisted my words. That was the last time you saw him. Son. I thought you loved me. Yes. I let him go. I thought that I could get over Steve. After all, I had other family. Perry was down from Vietnam in a couple of months, and I thought... He never made it. Much for locking out ghosts. You hungry, Mortimer? Hmm? whether you'll need that. I'm just as harmless as my predecessor. What's harmless about anyone trying to get you to remember all the things you want to forget, huh? Ah, dangerous business, that. Ignoring the past, trying to bury it under the details of the present, never really works, you know. What would you know about it? Certainly not as much as I should. But I always strive for self-improvement. Precious little else to do in that toasty place I share with Marley and all the other miserable souls. However, I've been given this job. Spirit of Christmas present. So I've done some boning up. Forgive the pun. Why would I need you to show me the present? I know the present. I live in the present. Mm? Ah, so you think. But how much do you live in the present? How much do any of you lucky, lazy souls really live in the present? When was the last time you really smelt a flower, tasted an apple, felt a breeze, really saw the people around you? <laughs> Believe me, I see enough of them. Do you? Really? never thought to ask Bob why he was late this morning. What does it matter? Late is late. Huh? Seventeen minutes. Indeed. What does anything matter? And what is really important? Questions that Bob Cratchit had to deal with at this very moment. Come on, Tim, we should get going. Mum's making breakfast. Should he snatch the boy away 
and become an obedient, on-time employee once again? Or should he throw caution to the wind and do something really special with his boy? <coughs> sure. Real smart, Cratchit. Break the kid's other leg, hmm? It's not a broken leg. Tim has a slow-growing congenital tumour. He's had it since birth, and it's getting worse. Oh. Patrick never told me that. He didn't want to use it to ask for charity. Instead, he just kept working harder and harder, hoping for a raise, maybe a higher bonus. But none came. I didn't set the minimum wage law. And I didn't tell him to have all of those children either. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's go and investigate these Cratchits, shall we? Maybe they're living a soft life right under your nose. How can anybody bring up children in a place like this? Yes, and on such limited means. How irresponsible. Look at their misery. Boo! <laughs> oh, sis, you scared me. Oh, what's this? Oh, I made it. Oh, wow. There's Mom, me, Dad, you, and Marty. Yeah, I see. It's really pretty. Bob, I think I need a strong arm to open this jar. I just can manage it. <sighs> Careful. Well, you're doing everything else so beautifully. The least I can do is open a jar. <laughs> What are you doing, sis? Guys, look. Oh, this. wow. You know, this morning when we passed the church, Tim asked if he could go in and say prayers for us all. He has the sweetest nature of anyone. Always thinking of others. Never feeling sorry for himself. Bob, he has to have his operation soon. Hug. Come on. We need a family hug. Hug time. Come on. Everyone. Oh, I love you so much. Now do you understand why Bob asked for a health plan? There are agencies that give public assistance. Are they too proud to ask? Mm? Hardly. They have asked and asked. Spend hours and hours in waiting rooms, filling in forms, trying to qualify. But the meager wages you pay Bob are just enough to disqualify them from most places. And still not enough to pay for doctors. Meanwhile, the tumor grows. Butterflies. Yeah. Butterflies are bats. That's my belfry. <laughs> and let us give thanks for this wonderful holiday season and for the love we share all year round. Amen. 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 To sliding on ice. To throwing snowballs. To strings of popcorn. To candy canes. To pudding and... Pie. Ah. Oh, yay! Tonight, at our proper supper, we will have the proper toasts. Mm. Not to Miss Scrooge again, I hope. I always do, Lily, you know that. After all, she is the source of our income. You are the source of our income, Bob. You work hard, you work overtime, and what do you get for it? Not even a raise or a promotion in all these years. You seem to have forgotten about the money I've loaned him. Well, after all, Libba, she did lend us money when no one else would. Yes, at a rate much higher than anywhere else. It's a high-risk loan. Mm. 
common practice. Well, it is common practice to charge a little bit more for high-risk loans. We have to do it at the office. It's one of Miss Scrooge's firmest policies. She's more than firm. She's rock hard. <laughs> is this your idea of a fun lunch? I'm enjoying myself enormously. Well, I'm not. Let's go. On one condition. That you remember everything you saw or heard here. Yeah. How can I forget? Well, what do you call this? Old home week in the basketball season, huh? Yes, it's a whole new sport. Jumping out of bed and directly onto the court. They're only going to be here through the holiday season. It seems their landlord made the move out of their home just before Christmas. I got it. Let's go. I just wanted you to share a little of their holidays. Now, listen carefully. So when I heard what your landlord had done, at first I couldn't believe it. I called our friend Rob, who heads the PTA this year. He got on the phone to the principal right away. Helen Williford. Yes, she remembered you and Ward, all that you've done for the school. And she knew that the gym wasn't going to be used over the holidays, so here you are. Well, I think the boys like it so much they want to stay. Oh, until their friends start showing up for gym class. <laughs> You mean they actually like living here, huh? You mean exposed to the world? Maybe what they like is being exposed to the way the world works. It takes emergencies sometimes to remind us what Christmas is really about. That we're all family, that we can get through anything if we help each other. <laughs> Wait until after Christmas, and all of these righteous and noble feelings are over. Hmm? <laughs> what then? You can't trust anything, can you? Oh, spare me, please. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. No, wait. I... <laughs> I haven't been inside of a church since my father died. His death was a tragedy, Ebonita. But you've held on to it long enough. This is the place where you can lay that burden down. together we are together right singing is the secret language of the soul and I just want to say thank you Lord for the gift of song thank you. Thank you, the gift we give each other Christmas is supposed to be all about giving isn't it all about sharing and helping each other I mean we've already heard a lot of stories about it well I have got one more for you this morning that's not one of those true-to-life stories. This one is from the other side. It's about the difference between heaven and hell. Seems these uh, two fellas get together one day to compare notes, and one of them is from heaven, and the other one's, well, he's from the other place. And the man from heaven asks him what it's like down there, what hell is really like. Well, says the man, it's terrible. We get really hungry, you know, feeding the furnaces. And then they sit us down at these big banquet tables piled high with food, all kinds of wonderful food. And the devil comes out and he says, 
All you can eat. Help yourselves. Seconds, eat, thirds even. Just one rule. <laughs> you gotta be polite down here and use your forks. No grabbing food in hell. So there we are, all ready to dig in and eat some of that wonderful food. And we reach down to pick up our forks. And every one of those forks got handles on it, three feet long. There's no way in the world we can get that food in our mouths. And that old devil just stands there laughing and laughing at us over and over every single night. I tell you, it is torture something awful. Well, says the other man, we got big tables of food like that in heaven too. And our folks, they got the same long handles. No way we can feed ourselves either. Exactly the same problem. So we just sit down and feed each other. They feed each other. They feed each other. What an idea. What an amazing thing to do. Makes the whole difference between feast and famine, between happiness and torture. How come nobody down in hell thought of that? Not one soul. Well, nobody down in hell thought of that because that's not the way they think. That's why they're down there in the first place. Wouldn't occur to them to do anything for anybody else. And that is their curse. And that is the real pain of living in hell. You see, It is the curse they laid upon themselves when they walked the earth. Amen. as punctual as the others, I see. What can you possibly show me that I haven't already seen? Sorry, my hand's kind of cold. Well, maybe I can warm it up a little. I'm not scared. I know God loves me. Yes, he does. We all love you. Did you know? Dad's here with me now all the time. No. No, I didn't know that. He doesn't have to go back to work till I'm better. You get some rest, Tim. I don't want to tire you. I'll be back tomorrow, okay? Okay, don't forget. <laughs> Oh. Tell me, is it a hopeless case? What's this uh, Tim says about you not going to work? Well, when he had his last bad spell, I took a few days off without notice. She gave you a leave of absence? She fired me. Cratchit's little boy is dying. How I conduct my business is no concern of yours, huh? Your soul is my concern. And the Cratchit family is my concern. They are members of my church. People die, nephew. I'll die, you'll die. Life goes on. The amount of work that has to be done here still remains. Bob Cratchit can't do it. I have to find someone who can. And the man's grief? 
This family's lost. That means nothing to you. I have my own grief. You think you don't owe anything to anybody else? You think that you're the only one responsible for your wealth? I have earned every single thing I have. Nobody gave me anything. What about Grandma Clara? Who cleaned all of those houses so you could go to school? It was her choice. She said she wanted the best for me. And Libba and Bob only want the best for their child. Get out of my office. Get out, I said. Don't you realize that you have climbed to the top of your pile of gold on the backs of Cratchit and Edna and... Get out! I said, get out! Call a doctor. Just go. I can't go. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. Just, just leave, please. Please, tell me it's not too late. Tell me it's not too late. They say uh, she died in her vault counting her money. <laughs> <laughs> but she'd roll in her grave knowing what's happening to her business. What is happening? What's going on here? The uh, IRS gets it all? Old fool no. died without a will. So with probate taking a big chunk, plus all the back taxes and legal fees, there'll be nothing left. Well, that figures. She never left a penny to anyone dead or alive. <laughs> Take it easy. All right. All right.
going on. Everything I've ever worked for. As if I never, ever lived. Not a soul to pay their respects. Who were you expecting? The people she used? Poor Aunt Bonita. To die unmourned. She died the way she lived, alone with her money. Sorry, the buses were running late. Well, I won't give a formal eulogy. Aunt Ebonita is gone. I'll miss her. I'm sorry, Luke. I can't pretend I will. I always grieved for who she might have been. Amen. It's not enough? 
We want the very best, remember? And you trust me with fifty dollars? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. I do, Chris. I will trust you with a million dollars. <laughs> Can I get that in writing? Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. And listen, the faster you go and return, the better I will repay you for your kindness. So get on. And Chris? Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Miss Scrooge. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, coming. <gasps> this is the biggest turkey I ever saw. 24 pounds. You've done a wonderful job, Chris. This is your change. Thank you. The store manager said this was for his special customer. you do me the honors? At first, they didn't believe the $50 bill was real. Then they were sure I'd stolen it. Some people have no trust, Chris. Hmm? It's so disheartening. <laughs> you look pretty when you're happy, Miss Scrooge. What a wonderful Christmas present you've just given me. Now, listen. I want you to take this taxi and deliver the turkey. Here's the address. Cratchits. Can't wait to see the look on No, 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 no. You mustn't tell them. It'll be our secret. Yes. Now, this is for the taxi, and this is for you. Holy smoke. I want you to have the taxi wait and take you home. And if there's anything left, you can have that too. Thanks. Don't drop that. Miss Scrooge, you're not going to wake up and want all this back, are you? Not in this life, Chris. Not in this life. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And do be careful. about the lamp yesterday. I don't want it. But I can't take it back. I already gave the money to the bail bondsman. Who said anything about money? Whoa, there you go. Merry Christmas. Take some bread. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Merry Christmas. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. Looks like turkey vegetable soup. Smells delicious too, Sam. Drink as much as you want. Have some bread, please. Have a needle. Oh, look at you. You look so different. Do you really think so? Oh, sure. I mean, your hair and your eyes. Oh, Sam Catherwood, are you flirting with me? <laughs> Whoa. About these homeless people, something has to be done about them. Oh, no, look, is all this just to get a court order to clear them off the street? Of course I want them off the street. Look at them. Freezing. Yeah. Get them some more food and some warm clothing. And do you need something? Sam, why don't we use my office as a sh shelter until we can build them a permanent one? Yeah. Uh, uh, Ebony, did you, do you know how much money this is? I mean, don't get me wrong, but are, are you feeling no? I feel wonderful. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas, dear. Now go get some Okay. Money.
Thank you. You're welcome. Wait. Merry Christmas. Tim, if that's someone else asking for a donation, just tell them that we can't afford... Dad? You all look as though you've seen a ghost. Well, this is such a surprise. I, I don't believe you've ever been inside our home before, Miss Scrooge. Sorry, it's a, it's a bit of a mess. Messy but love and joy, I would say. Um, this is my wife, Libba. And, uh, Tim, you've already met Sis and Martin. Are you the lady who makes my daddy work so hard? Marty, forgive him. For telling the truth? Well, this has been such a strange morning for us. Before you arrive, someone delivered a huge turkey to us, and we have no idea who to thank. Would you like coffee? Oh, no. No, I'm here strictly on business. I have something to say to you, Cratchit. There must be an immediate change in the office of Scrooge and Marley. You're firing him on Christmas Day. I'm going to increase your salary. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Doubling at the start. As a start? But I can't pay you that much money without a title. And so, you are now vice president. <laughs> Is this some sort of a joke or something? No, Mama. Don't you get it? It was Miss Scrooge who sent us the turkey. Well, how did you guess that? Well, I didn't have to guess. I can put two and two together. You like numbers? Yeah, I like math best of all in school. Great! Well then, Mr. Vice President, may I suggest that when you secure computers for the employees, you pick up an extra one for Tim. <sighs> now, to the important things. Let's see what we have here. Oh, hi. Well, this one. Yes, Marty. Little sis. And this, of course, is for Tim. Well, open them. Now. <laughs> you know that I am for saving, of course, in moderation. It's a punch and juice. Yes. Now this, we have another box here. Oh dear. This one says to Tim and family. So I let him up. Yes? Pleasure indeed. Thank you all and Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. The bill sent to me, uh, that is, until we set up a uh, medical employee's plan. Now, Bob, finding the right coverage will be your new responsibility. What has happened to you? To your business? My business? Oh, let's simply say that I'm making a sound investment. That's it. Can you stay? Have Christmas dinner with us? I would love to, but I've made other plans. It is always wonderful to hear such good news on such a glorious day. And Christmas is a time for good news. 
So let us rise and sing a hymn to the spreading of that good news. Mm -hmm. Amen. Watch out. 